Hello. Um, I'm going to... Okay, first of all, I'm going to get out of here. And I'm going to minimize that. Now, over in, uh, over in Excel, I made this population thing. I'm going to just delete this. In fact, I'm going to start this whole thing over again. Um, I'm going to show you how I made this graph. I'm going to do a, basically what I'm doing is a population simulation of bacterial growth. Uh, and maybe, maybe this bacterial growth is kind of slow because the time is in minutes. Things like um, flu germs and things like that reproduce much, much, much faster and take control of your body much sooner after contracting it from say someone t who's too close to you so we have here 30 uh, 60 90 and uh, rather than write all these numbers in um, Microsoft uh, Excel uh, encourages everyone to be lazy so it can actually fill in uh, numbers at 30 second intervals if you or 30 minute intervals if you get if you give it the first three numbers in the sequence it just kind of figures the rest of it out as for the population, let's let's say that our starting population is one bacterial cell. Well, that one bacterial cell becomes two. Now, I have to enter a formula. So I go two times the number above it, which I just click, two times B2. And of course, two times one is two. All right, well, um, now two times two is four. I can copy the formula down here like that by dragging the mouse. And also dragging the mouse again, four twos are eight, eight twos are 16, 16 twos are 32. You get the idea. I can go all the way down. And by the time I get to 600 minutes or 20 cell divisions, I get really two to the power of, I think, 19 cells. So two to the power of 19 cells would be um, 524 288 in fact you could probably just enter that formula just to make sure that that's what it is so 2 to the power of 20 is just over a million um, I have to enter an equal sign before that 2 to the power of 20 and there you go okay so never mind that um, so we're going to uh, plot a graph of time versus population and show you that it regresses to a exponential curve. And so I go to insert, I go to, I'm gonna to go to a scatter plot, although the there's better scatter plots here. I've go to all charts. Uh, I like this one better, so I'm gonna select that. Um, and so we have population, well, okay. Um, I also find the chart labeling for axes is kind of brain dead in Excel, so you have to tell it everything. Uh, you click on axis titles, and then you give the x and y axis separately a title. Hello? Okay. So this is time in minutes, and, and the other title, you do the same thing. Control A. Population. Population of cells. And as you can see, it seems to be close to zero for a very, very long time. But look at the size of these numbers in this section compared to the size of these numbers in this section. Clearly, these numbers are taking off like a rocket. So these numbers are not insignificant. If we change the scale of the graph somehow, um, like let's say to a logarithmic scale or something, not sure if we can do that. Um, Maybe the first thing we should do is to show you what I meant to show you, and that is to show you um, that this is an exponential growth curve. So if we start, for example, with a, a linear regression, it looks lousy because almost none, none of the points are anywhere close to the line. But we can turn this into exponential, and you can see that it's just bang on. Everything, everything works. Uh, we can display the equation and we can display the r squared and um, let's just show you, make that go up a bit. And you can see here that um, they gave us a rather strange equation. Instead of powers of 2, it's powers of e, 
like, what the heck is E? Well, if we do equal sign exp, which is e to the power of 1, this is e. That's what e is, 2.71828, 1828. Uh, and this is actually, it looks like a non-repeating decimal, but I, I assure you that it is not. It's a, it's a non-repeating decimal. It is an irrational number like pi. Um, and it's often used in biology, it's used in business, it's called Euler's constant, that's why it's given the letter E. Um, and of course it's in calculus, it's the calculus student's best friend. You'll find out why when you take calculus. So um, we have here, we have here not only this strange formula, but we have r squared equals 1. Well, if I put this as a power of 2, this is what I would have expected, right? To, you know, the starting population, which happens to be 1, multiplied by 2 raised to the power of x divided by 30, which is the number of 30-minute increases, take away 1. And if we do 30 over 30, take away 1, we get 2 to the 0, which happens to be 1. So that works out. So if we do um, 60 divided by 30, that's 2 to the power of 1, which is 2. 2 times 1 is 2. Okay, so you can see this formula also works. Huh. So who's right and who's wrong? Turns out we're both right. <laughs> it turns out we're both right. It turns out that really uh, within, well, actually... Within a few decimal places, only because the 0.231 is a is a irrational number as well, um, we can say that this is approximately equal to um, what we have here: 0 0.5 multiplied by times e. I wonder if they have e in the um, equation editor. Hold on, give me a second. Uh, yes, of course they do. But, yeah, I think I think E is just E. It doesn't matter. We'll just use E to the power of, um, what was the number? 0 0.231, 0 0.0231 times X. So, it turns out that this is really the case here. This is really, um, it turns out both of these are true. In other words, you can actually express any exponential curve in terms of any base that you like, okay? And that's why you're getting two separate, you know, two expressions that look different, but actually map onto the same curve, the same set of points, no difference, right? And you can see here that Excel has no problem with this other equation. R squared does equal one, meaning that the correlation is perfect r squared can only be a number between 0 and 1. So 0 means no correlation, 1 means absolutely lock on, uh, absolutely bang on correlation. So that's, uh, that's that. Um, as, as we were just saying that, you know, when we had 2 to the power of 0, we got the number 1 out of that, okay? And of course, any number to the power of zero is one, but if we do um, zero to the power of zero, we get an error, right? So Excel has a problem with zero to the zero. It, uh, in fact, any calculator you use will have a problem with zero to the zero. Um, so that's, you know, so in other words, any number raised to the power of zero will be one, including, well, let's experiment. Let's get a little experimental. How about negative 9 to the power of 0. Will that give us positive 1? Absolutely, you betcha, okay? Uh, there are reasons for that. Um, uh, basically, any number to the power of 0, if we have a to the power of 0, or sorry, let's say we have a to the power of x, and we divide by a to the power of x. a can be any number. A, there's no restriction on a except that it can't be 0. So if you have a to the power of x divided by a to the power of x, that leaves us by the laws of exponents to a to the power of 
x minus x, which is a to the power of 0. And anything divided by itself is 1. a to the power of x divided by itself is 1. So it's understood. So it doesn't matter what a is. It can be positive. It can be negative. It could be a fraction. It could be like, you know, um, here, 0 0.0012345. 9876 to the power of 0 and it'll still come out to positive 1. It really doesn't matter what you have there. As long as it's not 0, you'll always get 1 when you raise a number to the power of 0. And so that was the um, the result in the first um, calculation for population. If we look here, if we raise, you know, if we multiply or sorry, if we raise e to the power of 0 0.0231 times 30, um, you're going to get, um, I believe, one half, or maybe not. I think you're going to get two, and two times a half will be one. But anyway, and over here on this side, we have 30 divided by 30 is one. One minus one is zero. Two to the zero is one. One times one is two. I wanted to show you one other thing, though. Uh, what if the basically these uh, populations are very sensitive to starting conditions? What if the population initially wasn't one? What if it was, what if it was like five cells or I don't know something non-intuitive like three cells? Well, if we start off with three cells, all the numbers change, and notice that now we have 1.57 million. Which actually, if we take that number and divide by three, which is our starting amount. We actually get the original population when the population was 1. Interesting. Okay, so what if we do what if we do any number? 7. Okay. So if I divide this number by 7, I'll get my original population from when the initial conditions were equal to one cell. Well, okay. And that's because I'm multiplying the whole function by 7, right? So if I divide it by 7, it's like it's like as if my original population was 1. But here it's 7. If I divide by 7, I get, once again, 524,288. Well, if it's 10, everything should be 10 times uh, what it was. And this, as you can see, 5,242,880. And notice every time I've been talking about this, this graph up here has been changing over and over again. Every time I've changed the initial populations or the initial conditions, the uh, graph just updates to show you what that's going to look like um, uh, when you do those things. So if I do like, oh, sorry, okay, hold on. All right, so if I do something like, oh, hold on, oops. I don't know why I got the marching ants. I better just hit the escape key. All right, um, so back to one again and things are back to the way they were. But obviously, you know, quite often you could start off with as, with as much as a thousand cells and you can see now we get into the tens of millions of cells by the time we get to the 600th uh, uh, minute or the 10th hour. So um, actually it would be interesting if we could format these cells to introduce commas to make sure that the numbers are human readable. So we're going to use a 1000 separator and widen the column a little bit more. And you can see, yes, 524,288,000. Uh, I'll get rid of the decimals. You can't have a decimal of a cell. Cells are just whole numbers. So we can reduce that to zero. And finally, here we are. So. Um, we go back to one cell again notice that the population goes way down so obviously the initial conditions are um, you know a very important aspect of this COVID-19 crisis and is the reason we're all social distancing ourselves because the more we social distance ourselves the more we reduce the initial conditions that will result in uh, very low numbers later on you know, because if, if that number was anything else, like there's not much of a distance between 1 and 10, but that that has a huge influence uh, 10 days later or 10 hours later in according to this model. 
So uh, it, it actually increases all the numbers tenfold. So, okay, that's uh, all I wanted to talk about. Um, your homework um, would be in section 3.1, numbers uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 6. Um, on 6, instead of using a graphing calculator, use Desmos. And 9, 10, 13, and 14. Okay, so there you go. I'll just leave that there. Uh...